I'm Rapun Bhushan, a friend motivator and guide to IS Sprint, international motivational speaker, leadership tenor, CEO, coach, political strategist, and policy advisor. Welcome to ASDIS. ASDIS believe in quality, commitment, and success. Before starting the program, I would like to request you please share, subscribe, and like. Bas thoda saap ka support mujhe chahiye. The quote of today is the distinguishing characteristic of modern civilization is an indefinite multiplicity of human wants. The characteristic of ancient civilization is an imperative restrictions upon and a strict regulating of these wants. This quote of Mahatma Gandhi from the book The Words of Gandhi by Richard Attenborough. Source of the news of today is the Hindu newspaper. Modi exhorts youth to skill, reskill and upskill. Modi exhorts youth to reskill, reskill and upskill. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday they said the youth should skill, reskill and upskill themselves to remain relevant to the rapidly character changing business environment and the market conditions which were impacted by the COVID-19 crisis. Speaking on the occasion of the World Youth Skill Day and the 5th anniversary of Skill India Mission, Skill India Mission, Mr. Modi said the mission launched exactly five years ago had led the creations of a vast infrastructure for reskilling, reskilling and upskilling and enhancing opportunity for access to employment both locally and globally. Kausal Kendra, Kausal Kendra, under the program, hundreds of PM Kausal Kendra had been set up and the capacity of ITI ecosystem, ITI ecosystem increased. More than five crore youth were skilled. Referring to a portal launch recently for uh, mapping the skill and while employees and employers, the Prime Minister said it would help the skilled workers including the migrant workers who had returned to their homes to access jobs easily and the employers to contact the skilled employees at the click of the mouse. The skills of migrant workers would also help in changing the local economy. A skill is something which we give to ourselves, which grows with experience. A skill is timeless. It uh, keeps getting better with time. A skill is unique. It makes you different from other. A skill is treasure that nobody can take away. And a skill is the self-reliance. If not only makes one employee but also self-employable, the Prime Minister said. India and European Union India and European Union push trade skills. India and the European Union committed to framework for strategic cooperation until 2025 and vote to cooperate and their response to the coronavirus pandemic and the United Nations Security Council. The assurances came as the Prime Minister Narendra Modi held talks with European Council President Charles Michael and European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen why video conferencing on the Wednesday, a new initiative, a new initiative to revive talks on a free trade agreement that have been suspended since 2013. The two sides announced a high level dialogue between Commerce Minister Pius Goyal and European Union Trade Commerce Commissioner Phil Hogan to try and take the bilateral trade and investment agreement BTIA forward. India and EU are natural partners. India and EU are natural partners. In particular, officials at the leader discuss India's tension with China at the line of actual control, the situation with Iran, and concern over the cross-border terrorism from Pakistan. Pacific. Pacific a pivot for ties with Moscow. Pacific a pivot for ties with Moscow. India and was sites oil and gas investment in Vietnam and area of the cooperation with Russia. India wants Russia to be more involved in the Indo-Pacific and Moscow should look its own interest in the region and that will create a mutual basis for the cooperation and dialogue said Indian envoy to Moscow. D.B. Venkatesh Verma on Wednesday while referring to Indian and Russian investment in Vietnam oil and gas sector as one of the areas of cooperation. We see, we see Asia, Russia as uh, very important Pacific power, just like Russia has an interest in the Indian Ocean, we have an interest in the Pacific Ocean. I think the connectivity that we are looking at, we are looking at the Indo-Pacific as a geographic continuum for cooperation and for the certain principle that we want this region to be free and fair 
everyone. Mr. Burma said on response to question from the Hindu, he was speaking at the webinar jointly organized by the Russian International Affairs Council and the Indian Council for World Affairs, referring to Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov's statement on Indo Pacific on several occasions that Russia does not want to create a new division, especially with respect to the containment of China. Mr. Verma said India saw this in a slightly different light. India did not see it as a containment or non containment, but as a positive construct that brought together countries and people on the basis of certain principles. If India if India were to say that no country in the region should look for unilateral advantage at the cost of international rules and law, I'm sure Russia will agree, he said. India should believe in the EU. Their ties assume significance as a rules based on order gets challenged by the rise of exceptionalism. Exceptionalism. In today's fragmented world, the power of any aspiring global player depends on the number and quality of bilateral, multilateral relationship. In such partners, should India invest, the European Union is one. The EU and India have much in the common, both aim to enhance strategic autonomy and their global standing. Diversifying strategic value chain is also a common interest as in the urgent need to address climate change. The EU and India can support each other in these endeavors. On purely economic terms, the EU is India's first trading partner and the biggest foreign investor with uh, 67.7 euro billion dollar, uh, 67.7 billion euro worth of investment made in 2018, equal to 22 percent of the total FDI flows. But there is still room for improvement, especially when compared to EU investment in China, which in the same year announced to 175.3 billion euro enhance the business cooperations in can be can both help with the eu and india diversity diversify their strategic value chains and the reduce economic uh, dependency notably on china india could succeed in attracting eu investment that might be moving out in china but to do so it must address the mutual trust deficit facilitating the people's mobility and connectivity is a good way to improve mutual understanding and create opportunity for innovation and growth. The next topic is this is the editorial of the Hindu newspaper. China's post-COVID aggression is reshaping Asia. China's post-COVID aggression is reshaping Asia. This article was written by Lindsay W. Fout and Julian Gavritz. India's deadly encounter with China in the Galwan Valley is not an outlier in the Beijing Russian behavior in Asia. China's coronavirus mask diplomacy, mask diplomacy, mask diplomacy, mask diplomacy has given to way to tense geopolitical confrontation with the growing array of its neighbors from its standoff with the Vietnam and Malaysia and the South China Sea to threatening Australia with the backwards. <laughs> And uh, wine, beef, uh, barley, and Chinese student Beijing's the blatant aggressiveness is accelerating long-standing debates about the underlying cost of the reliance on the China and the spurring support for the closer coordination between other Indo-Pacific partners. The Indian, Japanese, Japanese, Malaysians, and Australian government have all taken concrete steps to reduce their economic exposure to Beijing. Beijing spanning investment manufacturing and technology. India and Australia recently inked a new military logistic agreement in the virtual summit between Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Scott Morrison and a similar agreement between Delhi and Tokyo may follow. The quadrilateral dialogue between Australia, India, Japan and the US is growing stronger in even expanding and recently as well. Association of Southeast Asian and Asian Asian foreign ministers issued one of their strongest statement to date on the South China Sea, insisting that maritime dispute must be resolved in accordance with the UN law of the sea treaty. So thank you very much to watch my program. Wish you all the best. God bless. God bless Bharat.